Hi, I'm Brendan Aylward from Unified Health and Performance. With the following routine, we'll be targeting some specific muscle groups that we would anticipate being negatively affected by working from home and prolonged bouts of sitting. We'll start with a mobility routine and gradually progress to a more strength-based, low-impact workout. For the routine, we'll perform three parts of five different exercises. The first five will be light stretches or mobility exercises, and you can kind of gradually work in whatever range of motion you have as you slowly warm up your body and work into the movements. For the second set of five exercises, they'll be slightly more strenuous, and we'll talk about how you can integrate some core into the movements. And then for the last five, they'll be more standing, strength-based exercises, and you'll get to use your strength bands. The routine is designed to be done a couple times a week for only 15 or 20 minutes a day. Uh, if you experience any aches or pains or discomforts with the movements, you can either stop or skip them and move on to the next. Uh, so let's get started. For the first of five exercises, we'll be on the ground and hands and knees. From here, we'll shift your hips back towards your heels, and then you'll place one hand behind your head. We're gonna slowly bring that elbow towards the opposite wrist, and you'll get a stretch behind your shoulder, and then we'll gradually open up and rotate in the opposite direction. It's important that you follow your elbow with your eyes as you turn here, and you'll get a good stretch through your mid-back. And we wanna make sure you keep your hips connected to your heels. That way we can't turn as much at your lower back. We'll perform five reps on each side. Now we'll move on to the second exercise. So we'll still be on hands and knees. You'll place your palm upwards and then reach slowly through. Uh, the opening between your knee and your elbow. From here, you'll kind of drop your shoulder towards the ground and you should get a good stretch behind your shoulder. Uh, we'll perform five reps on each side as well. From here, we'll move up into the third exercise, which is in tall kneeling, which means you'll be on both knees. You'll place your hands behind your lower back with your palms facing away from your body. You'll bring your arms out to the side and once they get straight, you'll turn your palms so they're facing in the opposite direction and then you'll pat yourself on the back. This is a good exercise for shoulder mobility and your upper back mobility. From here, we'll move into the fourth exercise, which is in half kneeling. So you'll swing one knee forward and we'll have one knee down and one leg forward. Uh, you'll slightly lean forward and you'll get a stretch in your hip flexor, which is the front of your hip. We'll hold this position for 15 or 20 seconds, making sure that we're not extending through your lower back as you perform the movement. If you don't feel the stretch in the front of your hips here, it may help if you squeeze your butt and slightly lean forward. And then for the last exercise, we'll swing that leg out to the side and you'll slowly rock forward and back. You can place your hands on the ground for extra balance and you'll be shifting your hips back towards your heels and then forward back into the starting position. We'll do five reps on each side and you'll get a stretch in your hip and your groin area. We wanna think about maintaining a neutral spine, which means a flat back as you rock your hips forward and back. For the second set of exercises, we'll perform three movements on the ground and two movements standing. So we'll still be in that hands and knees position, but from here, we want to think about a couple of things. So I usually tell our athletes to think about balancing a glass of water on their lower back as they perform this movement so we can make sure the right muscles are moving. So we'll start with our leg at 90 degrees. We'll make a right angle with it. And then you're going to slowly kick your leg back rotate your knee out to the side and bring it around towards your elbow. So we're essentially making a circle with your hip. And again, just to remind you that we're trying not to compensate and move at your lower back. So we wanna think about balancing a glass of water on your back as you perform the movement and your hip will just be moving in whatever range of motion it has. From here, we'll get into a push-up position. We call it a high plank. So you're on your hands and toes. You'll stack one foot on top of each other, and then you'll slowly be rocking forward and back. You should feel a stretch behind your leg and your calf, your lower leg. As you rock forward and back, we wanna think about your hips staying at the same height, and the exercise is just targeting your calves and your ankle. 
For the third exercise, you can use your strength band. So you'll lay on your back, you'll place the band around the bottom of your foot and pull your leg as straight up as you can get. You'll feel your hamstring stretch here and the leg that doesn't have the band wrapped around it will slowly lower to the ground. If you press your lower back down into the ground, you'll feel your abs working a little more. And for the last two exercises, we'll come up into a standing position. Uh, we wanna get our feet about slightly wider than your shoulder width and maybe your toes turned out slightly. Uh, we'll reach down towards your toes with straight legs. It's okay if you can't get all the way to your toes. And then from here, we'll pull your hips down and your chest up into a squat position, and then we'll stand all the way up. So the first portion, you'll feel a hamstring stretch, and then you'll drop your hips and pull your torso upright into a better posture before you stand. It's important that as you pull your hips down, you simultaneously pull your chest up so you're in a good posture when you're at the bottom of a squat. For this last movement, we'll balance on one foot. Once you find a good balance point, we'll have you soften your knee or slightly bend your leg. From here, you're trying to move back at your hips so you can pretend like someone has a rope wrapped around your hips and it's pulling you straight back. Uh, we're on one foot, so you'll fold back slowly, trying to maintain your balance and then stand back up into that upright position. You should feel this movement in the back of your leg and your hamstring. If you're having trouble maintaining balance, you can put your hands on a wall in front of you and think about pushing your hips away from the wall. For this last set of exercises, we'll perform a few core exercises and then a couple upper body and lower body strength movements with the band. We'll start in a push-up position and from here, you're going to pike your hips up so your hips will go up into the air and your head will go through your elbows. If you can, you'll try to reach with your hand towards your opposite toe. If you can't reach all the way, that's fine. And then we'll shift our weight back forward into a good high plank or push-up position and we'll repeat for about five reps in each direction. From here, we'll transition into a side plank, so you'll place your elbow on the ground directly underneath your shoulder and your forearm can rest on the floor. Uh, we'll stack your feet on top of each other and try to make a straight line from your foot to your shoulder. Uh, we'll hold this position for as long as you can before switching sides and doing the opposite side. If you're comfortable in the side plank position, you can make it harder by bracing or squeezing your abdominal muscles and squeezing your glutes and trying to create as much tension as possible through your midsection. From here, we'll come up into standing. We wanna get our feet pretty far apart from one another, but they should remain parallel. We'll drop into what's called a split squat, which is the bottom of a lunge. Uh, from here, we would want to make sure that our feet are in line with our toes and our legs are parallel with one another. Your knee should be directly underneath your hip and your front knee should be directly over your ankle. And we're just going to hold this position. It's good for your knees and it's good for your lower body strength. Uh, same thing, we'll hold for about 15 or 20 seconds and then we'll switch sides. For these last two movements, we'll show how you can use your strength band to perform some traditional strength movements in place of using dumbbells or barbells. For this first exercise, you'll place the band around the bottom of your feet. You'll be sitting on the ground with your legs straight and your torso upright. From here, we'll reach forward and pull your elbows to your ribs. We want to make sure that the movement's coming from your shoulder blades to work your upper back muscles. So we want to see the shoulder blades squeeze together and then spread apart as you reach forward. You're going to maintain an upright torso here and we'll perform anywhere from like 8 to 12 reps. And for the last exercise, you can come back up to standing. We'll place the band underneath your feet and you can grab the sides. Keeping your elbows by your ribs, you'll pull your hands up to your shoulders and then lower them back down. 
To increase the amount of resistance you have in the hammer curl, you can reach further down on the band towards your ankles. Should feel your bicep working, so just above your elbow and below your shoulder. As you finish up that last set of curls and you feel a little bit of fatigue in your arms, you're finished. Great job with that. Hopefully you're able to take away a few strategies to use in the coming months to stay active. Carving out even 15 or 20 minutes a day for movement will be important for improving how you feel both physically and mentally. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.